All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I want to welcome you all back, and uh, happy non-farm non -farm payroll Friday. Wow, it's going to be an exciting day. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get our analysis bias chart uh, together here, and we are going to um, we're going to get this party started. So uh, let's do that, and let's start off with the euro dollar. And you know, the euro, I'll tell you, the euro has been really weak. I mean, following yesterday, yesterday's ECB meeting, um, you know, we talked about it dropping down towards support here, and uh, I mentioned uh, yesterday, I'm like, you know, if you get an opportunity to buy it at 1130, you know, you might want to take advantage of that. You know, we came down to, you know, basically 111.36, I mean, it, you know, didn't really drop as far or as fast as I thought, um, but, you know, you can see the significance of the support that we're on. Um, now, uh, you know, I, I, I kind of left you guys a moment ago with the idea about the non-farm payroll, and let, let me let me quickly just talk about that uh, again. Um, uh, um, the 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 fact of the matter is the market is starting to look at the possibility of a weaker jobs number. All right, you know, we, we're looking at 160,000 jobs. Uh, that's what analysts are expecting. You you take into account the Verizon, you know, strike if 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 that counts against non-farm payroll. You know, even if we have a number that's, you know, 120, 130,000, the market's going to say, "Well, that's not too bad." Uh, I personally think we can actually come in a little bit lower than that. I'm actually hoping that we get a little bit of dollar weakness today following the jobs number because if we do like I mentioned to you guys a little bit earlier I'm actually looking to buy the dollar Canadian on a dip um, I own the dollar Canadian going into the jobs number uh, I, I own a very small pit piece of my you know a quarter size of a dollar Mexican peso um, but I, you know any dip in the dollar Canadian and I'm looking at an as an opportunity to buy it now the risk is um, the risk is since I think the market is bracing for a weaker number, the risk is is the number comes in. Let's say we come in at 150,000 or 160,000. Let's say we come in in line. If we come in in line with expectations, the dollar may scream higher um, because everybody's going to say, "Wow, you know, even even with the Verizon strike, the uh, the numbers came in, you know, at 160,000, and we could end up, you know, setting up for a really big dollar rally today." Uh, if the number comes in in line. So I think it's going to be a weaker number, personally. Um, again, 100,000, 120,000 seems very uh, much doable today, but I'm not a good non-farm payroll watcher, so I'll, I'll go ahead and, um, you know, uh, 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 start off by saying that. All right. If we have a, um, if we have a, a a strong number or an inline number or better, the risk is the dollar takes off. And so you can see how the euro is poised at really key support here. The problem is if the number is strong, we're gonna we're going to test this 111 again. And 111 is major support because I can only imagine how many stops reside below 111. There are a lot of traders right now that are trying to buy the the euro at these lows and the reason why um, in my view and let, let me get rid of let me get rid of some of these fibs here for a second okay in my in my opinion the reason why traders are trying to buy this 111 level is because you know we're you know we're at the bottom of this this pitchfork um, that we've been talking about for months and months and months on end I uh, I would assume that because we're so close to these lows and, and really at this um here and I'll 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 draw this out for you, which I I had a, a trader last week say oh, you know how about that six one eight you know we're sitting on that six one eight I know we're sitting at really a key fib, but how many traders right now have been buying the euro this last week thinking all right this is it you know we're gonna we're gonna take it back up to one fourteen or higher, you know. All those traders probably have their stops below 111 and definitely below 110.50. All right, without a doubt. So, where, where at this point in time, where is the pain trade? You know, what is going to create the most amount of pain 
for traders. You know, my opinion is a break lower in the the euro. I mean, if the euro breaks lower, that is going to create a lot of pain. Um, I, I think there's, you know, again, you you look at this, the, the 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 pair is possibly bottoming here. Okay, it, this right here is going to create a lot of pain. Uh, I know for those of you that uh, say that the sound is bad, uh, I know I know the sounds awful this morning. If I sound like I'm breaking up, I'm, there's not anything I can do. I actually tried to log out, log back in. Um, have anybody uh, got a little bit of improvement? It's, it sounds sounds better. Okay. I actually, I actually believe, um, I, I actually believe I'm hitting like a, 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 a um, everybody sounds, it says it's a little better. Okay. And intermittent. I think I'm hitting a bad server, frankly. Um, you know, between wherever I'm at and you're at, and like a, the server that I'm hitting on on GoToWebinar, which happens from time to time. But as long as it's tolerable, you know, it might be a little choppy from here and there. So um, anyway, okay. So 111 is big. Obviously, to create a squeeze in the euro dollar, to create to create a squeeze. <laughs> to create a squeeze, I can't even speak this morning, it's Friday, uh, 112.20, big resistance. Uh, you guys know that's been big resistance, we've talked about it uh, a, a, a number of times this week, I think we've written 112.15 or 112.20 on um, on our bias chart pretty much uh, all week long, and I'm going to tell you, a break above here would create a massive squeeze, all right, so it, let, let's say we have a jobs number um, let's say we have a jobs number less than 100,000 jobs created. We could actually see a, a break up there. Now, you know, obviously a move below 111, I think, is going to create uh, a soft too. So, you know, you know, it it can go either way. Um, you just know where your you know, you know where your um, breaking points are, and I I think it's very very well established. We are in a bearish trend, and that bearish trend will not change, guys. It will not change until we break above that 112.20, okay? Break above that 112.20, we're going to go back into our range environment. But right now, this is a bearish trend that we're in, um, okay? Okay. Okay, let's go over the cable. The pound, services PMI number came in a little better than expected. The pound really is not showing much reaction. Um, okay. And uh, here's the cable. Uh, the cable, in my opinion, and we're just same place that we were at yesterday, so I don't think anything's changed here. All we have to do is do this. I, I, told, I told you guys yesterday, and I'm going to say it again, I don't think there's any reason to trade the cable. I, I, I really... Uh, I really don't. Everybody's like, my voice is breaking up. Oh, man, I don't know what the I don't know what the deal is. The, the, the sound, all right, guys, is what it is. Okay, Mirko says you're fine here. And see, most tech companies, especially you take a company like Citrix, you know they have several co-locations. Citrix is a publicly uh, traded company, and they they they're the ones that host GoToWebinar. They have co-locations all over the United States, and uh, they may even, if not knowing their infrastructure, they probably have co-locations, um, you know, in different parts of the world as well. What, since some of you say that the sound is perfectly fine, and others of you say it's choppy, that means that based on what location I'm at. And based where you're at, there's a intermittent problem. So that means, you know, like my sound may be uploaded, like my, my voice may be uploaded to just, you know, within obviously m milliseconds, uploaded to like, let's say a co-location in San Francisco, and then it hits, uh, you know, Dallas, Texas before it goes to wherever you're at. And maybe one of those co-locations is out. Uh, or you know having some issues, and that's that's why some of you, you know, maybe in Europe, if it goes to San Francisco and then uh, you know across the Pacific over to, you know, wherever, um, maybe your sound is fine because 
we're not you're not hitting that server there's that not that server issue in between us so that's why in my opinion from a very non tech person point of view some of you can hear me just fine others of you are like oh boy, boy Blake your sound is bad so you know and also realizing that in 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 the middle of the United States um, uh, in the middle of the United States, uh, uh, we have really bad and severe weather. Um, so could be it. And Ziggy says it. It, it seems like uh, Ziggy says it seems like some of the issues are when um, when I make major screen changes, which would which would be interesting. So um, perhaps that will it that will be that that's perhaps that is it. Uh, let me see here. Um, <laughs> everybody's like, I'll short Citrix again. Okay, going back over the cable, we got to kind of cruise through the analysis at this point. We have um, right now, let me, let me do something else too. Uh, I'm going to actually try something really quick and see if this helps. Stand by. Stand by, people. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna look at my performance while we're talking and just see if there's any anything uh, changing here. All right. So going back to the cable, uh, really quick. All right. I, I don't really think there's a reason to be trading the pound at this point. I, I know I've I've said that. And I'll say it again. I, I it, same same deal as yesterday. We have support that's close. Uh, 143.80. We have resistance at it's a 145. But really. I think a move up to 146 is going to provide a great shorting opportunity, and a dip down below 143 is going to op offer a great buying opportunity. I um, don't have any pound exposure, and I don't um, really, um, I really don't want any at this point. I think that, that, that as we close in on the rough end. The market's extremely volatile, and it's extremely, as, as I've explained before, it's very emotional, and um, the market is moving just based off polls. So these poll numbers come out, and it's just moving the market aggressively one direction or the other. I think it, it, it to me, makes perfect sense just to stay away from the cable right now. But, you know, you guys are going to do whatever you want to do, and if you have laptops that, um, that need a good throwing, then perhaps you will uh, uh, take advantage of that and and and, and Trade the pound and then throw a laptop after that. Uh, so um, first, first, first and foremost, supports at 130, uh, 143.80, and then below that at 143. So I'm going to write down two levels of support for the cable. 143, whoops, 143, 143.80. Okay, uh, both supports right there, and then resistance at 145, and then obviously at 146. It's going to take us a little bit of, uh, uh, you know, to get up to the 145 level, but I'll just say 145, all right? This is a range. We are definitely in a range in the cable. It's very choppy and, um, you know, kind of tough to navigate. So I think, uh, you know, you, you might, again, be better off staying away from that. Let's see. Here's the Swiss Um Yesterday we dipped. We didn't quite dip to the 38% retracement, which I, I was. Uh, I think we wrote it down yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, at 98.40. Um, that is still support. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to carry this on and put this over here from yesterday. Uh, I'm going to move it over there. Obviously, what I'd love to see is a move down to 98, 98 cents. Uh, on on a really really weak number that we could possibly get there over the course of the next couple of days. I don't I don't know if we're going to get there today necessarily unless we 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 print a less than hundred thousand um, job 
print. And also, have to, you, have to, you have to keep in mind we have unemployment, uh, or uh, excuse me, um, the unemployment rate that the markets look at 4.9 percent. Then you have to uh, you know look at 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 um, at uh, you know the 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 numbers like average hourly earnings, which um, the market's actually looking for it to be a little bit weaker. So obviously, if you get a little higher print and average hourly earnings, you, know, you start to see that "quote unquote" wage inflation. That could create, you know, some dollar bullishness too. But you know, on, on some weak data, we may get down to ninety eight forty today. Obviously, ninety eight to be the support where I'm hoping we get down not to get long. It just, uh, I don't know if that's going to happen. So, ninety eight forty is resistant or it's support and then obviously I'm um, going back to resistance is 9960 and if we break that if we break that then you know the next thing you know you're 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 talking about a move up towards parity so that'll be key one of the one of the things I have to mention about the um, uh, about the Swissy is that the, you notice the pullbacks of this move has been very 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 um, minor and very shallow. So here, let's get rid of this. Well, actually, let, let me stop here for a second, just so everybody sees it, and then I'm going to remove it. All right, so the 618 retracement of the move from the very top, we still have some distance. That gets us to parity, right? So I'm going to delete that. The secondary top right here, um, the secondary top here, you notice we stopped right on a 618. Or right there, okay. I'm going to remove that now. But what what you what you may not notice is this move here. We've had this huge move in this in the Swissy. Look at how shallow this pullback has been, and I, I can't ignore the fact that this thing has just failed to really pull back and not it's so what that means is it's not getting shorts an opportunity to get out and it's not getting giving an opportunity for people like me that want to get long right so you you know not only are shorts they can't get out of their shorts because you know if you're shorting up here it's like okay I can't you know you're trying to get out down here or down here it's like you can't get out and then if you're long or if you want to be long like me you're like, well, you know, I can't even get a pullback down here to 98 cents to get long. So the, 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 the longer you stay up at these prices, the more the risk is that you break out because then you're going to get people like me wanting to chase it higher because we're like, well, forget it. You know, it's like it can't dip, so I'm just going to buy it on a breakout. And then you got people that are short that says, damn it, I can't get out down here, so I'm just going to get squeezed out. I got to cover. So the longer we sit up here, the more at risk it becomes to breaking out to the upside. And that says it's a very shallow retracement, which means uh, in turn that it could be a very bullish move. Uh, and that is the risk right now on the Swissy. And, I, you know, to, frankly, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I might not be opposed to chasing it higher if I have to. Okay. Um, so that's why... We're in a range right now, but man, we could threaten to go bullish here. Dollar yen. All right, let's talk about the dollar. Now, the dollar yen has um, pulled back, and we pulled. We're, we're, we're you know, obviously, we, we hit this 50% retracement, so that that's significant now. I, I thought we would get down to uh, 108.20, and we might still. Um, that is horizontal support, okay? But then again. 50 is also horizontal support too, so don't don't take away the fact that that is horizontal support there. All right, you can you can copy that and paste it right here and say, okay, well, you know, we got you know horizontal support all over the place, right? So we got 10850, 10820, 10820, 10850, both supports, right? Then resistance, I mean. Where does it take the downside pressure off of the yen? Well, my opinion is probably right around here, right? You look, support, resistance, resistance. That comes in at 
12. So I'm going to put, I'm going to write down 109.15. We break above that, we take off that downside pressure, all right, we're on a range. But any downside pressure that we have right now that you've seen over this last week or so of trading, that downside pressure is going to abate, you know, we get above that 109.15. One of the things that you have to keep in mind about the dollar yen is the dollar yen is, is a provoker of um, dollar strength and dollar weakness. So if the dollar yen breaks above the 109.15, you know, it could indeed provoke some dollar strength as well. All right. Let's go over to the Canadian. So I am long the Canadian. Uh, I am going to carry it into the. Um, I'm going to carry it into non-farm payroll. I may be extremely unhappy after this. Uh, after this non-farm payroll, I may be happy. Um, the fact of the matter is that the Canadian is holding up very well, despite the. Here, let's get rid of that. The the dollar Canadian is holding up very well despite this um, this strength that we've had in crude oil recently, all right? So, it, it, you know, and I, and, I, and, I, and I showed you guys earlier, here's crude, right? What you'll notice here is typically you have a, you know, um, uh, an inverse relationship, okay, typically, all right? Um, you know, crude goes down, dollar Canadian goes up, crude goes down, dollar Canadian goes up, you know, crude, you know, finds a top, dollar Canadian finds a bottom, you know, it, very inverse, right? Very, very inverse, very inverse between crude and the Canadian. What you'll notice here is especially over the last, you know, couple of, couple of days, okay, maybe even the last week or so, what you'll notice here is the dollar Canadian has actually been holding up pretty well despite the rally in crude, right? Crude's been rallying. Dollar Canadian is not selling off. Now, as I, I without going back into the crude charts because I don't really don't want to, um, as I explained to you before, I think crude's peaked at 50. You know, I showed you the channel. I think crude's peaked. If crude's done going higher, that means the dollar Canadian is probably on the verge of breaking higher. All right? Now, like I said, I don't, I think that crude is done going up for now. I think it, you know, travels back to the, you know, $45 level before moving higher because it's, it's moving in an upward channel. But if I'm right, this dollar Canadian is going to scream. All right, and if there's a weak jobs picture today, I'll be looking for a dip to buy more dollar Canadian. Okay, Rio says it's not true, there's a shift now, they're $50 shift in crude, uh, the, they're exactly the same if you shift the crude, no, 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 Rio, okay, here's the daily, now, are you going to argue with me and tell me that crude and uh, the dollar Canadian don't have an inverse relationship? You're going to tell me that the Canadian dollar and crude don't track each other. See, the way you trade um, uh, divergences in correlations is actually the key to trading correlations. It's not so much trading the correlations because correlations can help you confirm, you know, while you're in a move. But when you're really looking for a turn in the market, you look for divergences. Okay, and you said over over the last couple of days. Well, look at over the last couple of days. This is this is the hourly. This is the hourly. Crude and the dollar Canadian should be going opposite directions, all right? 
they basically have been, you know, crude's been crude's been sitting here around 50, and the, the Canadian hasn't hasn't uh, hasn't hasn't moved down. All right. So if if crude fall if crude falls now, you know, if crude falls now, because you have to look the last the last several days. Okay, crude's been going higher, holding around 50. The dollar Canadian has holding been holding above 130. That's called a divergence in correlation. That's very important. Very important to understand. So, you know, you can, you can go ahead and disagree with me. And if you do, short the dollar Canadian. And if crude goes higher, I'm pretty sure you're going to, uh, if crude moves lower, I mean, and you're short the Canadian, dollar Canadian, I'm pretty sure you're going to lose money. You know, but the way I'm trading it, is I'll be long the dollar Canadian, and even in, even in some sort of pullback, I'm going to look for an opportunity to be a buyer. Just because if you look at crude right now, crude is rolling over. So any dip now down towards this 130.20, I'm a long, I'm on, I'm, I'm, I'm on the long side, or I'm going to look to add. Okay, so you got to figure where are we, where do we have some support near some fibs? If we can get a dip down to like 130.20. That'd be great. Now, if we rally, we break above 131.40, then we're off to 142. So let's write down those numbers. One, where am I at? 130.20 is support. And it's minor support, by the way. 131.40, 132. And that will be significant resistance, by the way. If we break 132, it's... Um, it's going to be uh, it's going to be bullish. And also keep in mind um, here's the dollar Canadian. Just a longer term viewpoint about the dollar Canadian coming out of a descending wedge. We have a inverted head and shoulder pattern, and we're just consolidating above the neckline while crude's selling off. Very important to realize. Okay, when I come back, we'll do the Kiwi, the Aussie dollar index. We only have a half an hour. We'll do the um, peso. Uh, Swedish Krona, Norwegian, uh, the Nordic currencies, Krona, the crowns. We'll do both the crowns. Uh, I'll be back in a few moments. Don't go anywhere. Thanks everybody for being here. TGIF. Be right back. All right, guys and gals, let's uh, let's finish up with our analysis. I, I kind of got to cruise through this stuff because um, you know obviously we've only got a half an hour left. Uh, so the kiwi, kiwi has been friggin' strong. Now that you want know, to talk about a thorn in my side right here, this is um, obviously having a negative impact on my Aussie uh, New Zealand uh, trade right now, and this kiwi has been just unbelievably strong. Uh, we've um, we hit 6850. We 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 thought that 6850 was going to be a pretty big resistance. We talked about it yesterday. Um, we're we're up there right now, and we're you know hitting. This is this is. I want to say it's the sell zone, but you know, do you do you really want to you know do you really want to um, uh, um, you know here? Let me let me actually I'm going to remove this for a second, and uh, let me remove that. And let me put in this. Do that. Okay. This is, in my opinion, like a probably like the 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 sell zone, if you will. All right. Right through here. Um, I you know I don't necessarily think you you want to be shorting it. Just ahead of uh, non-farm payroll. Obviously, if you have a weak number, I mean, we can shoot right up to 69 cents. I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. But uh, I could see why we're stalling where we're at. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to figure out um, how important a move up here is going to be because that would be you have this broken trend line. So just just imagine a retest. Okay. Of that broken trend line back up at 69 cents. That's that to me seems very possible. Here, let's get rid of this for a moment. We don't need that for, for right now. So you take this high, you take this low, okay. 
A move up to 69.07 would be a 68% retracement of this. Now we have uh, the 60, uh, 68, 63 right here, which is a 50%, but I'm more interested at the 69 um, level. So if we move up to 69, let's just call it 69.05. Just imagine you know, some stops getting taken out above 69 cents. That to me um, seems like it, it's possible that we get up there. Now, if, if we have a weak jobs report, if we have a, a weak jobs report, that could you know spike us up here. You know, if we if we let's say we only create a hundred thousand jobs, I mean, we could very easily see that. Man, crude oil looks weak. By the way, you're not seeing any FX response. By the way, in crude with crude because obviously we have uh, we have. Um, uh, you know, NFP coming up. No one wants to take positions ahead of uh, ahead of NFP. So with crude coming down, you're not seeing any response in the Canadian. All right, now support uh, would be right here. Same thing we had written down from yesterday, and actually we came pretty damn close with that spike low here. So uh, 67, 65. I think that's the same support we wrote down yesterday. I'm gonna write that down today. That's support. Let's go over to the Aussie. By the way, if you guys are asking a bunch of questions, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to get to too many of them today, I don't think. Non-farm payroll Fridays are uh, really tough for me to get to questions. The Aussie uh, has been very weak and surprisingly weak. And this is, I don't know if you guys saw the move up in, in copper today. Copper is up like 2.5% right now, or 3%. Copper. Why isn't this moving? I have to. Oh, I'm going to shut that down. I'll, I'll restart in a second. But copper is uh, is is up, you know, um, near its highs, and the Aussie is just doesn't even care, All right? So, with that being said, um, obviously we have a spike high here. We have resistance here. We have previous support right there. This is now significant. That's at 73 cents. I'm going to write that down. Resistance at 73. Um, support. We have 72 cents, and beyond that is 71.50. I'm going to write both of those down. 71.50. I said I think everybody's and this is bearish still. Okay, I think everybody's expecting a weak weak jobs report. By the way, um, just FYI. Well, let's go over to the dollar index. So here's the dollar index. Yesterday we held. Um, you, you, you think this channel support? Remember we had this drawn. We've had this drawn for weeks now. Okay, we broke out of that trend line. Came down basically retest line, and we bounced. So this low, well, still 95 cents is important, and 96 cents is resistance. But you can see that even 95.20 is offering support. So. I'm going to write down uh, 95, 95, 20, and then 96. This is obviously critical resistance, and we are still in a range. We break through 96 cents, and we're going to turn bullish on the dollar index. Um, let's take the peso. I am long some U.S. dollar Mexican peso. Uh, this thing has been this th this thing is um, I, I'm gonna re I'm gonna re-explain to you guys why I'm long the U.S. dollar Mexican peso. Uh, so when we were down here, down at 17, uh, you guys remember I'm like, man, I can't wait for us to rally back to the 618 retracement up to 1850. I'm like, I can't wait when we were down here. And it looked like we were going to bottom. I said, I cannot wait to sell this thing at 1850. On top of that, you know, I moved to 1850. That'd be 161% extension as well. So we got to 1850 eventually, and um, I shorted it twice. I shorted it once here, and I shorted it again, like right here. Made a little bit of mon money both times. But the thing about the U.S. dollar Mexican peso that's been so surprising to me is the relentless strength that it's had, even as stocks have been strong. Now, typically, 
typically, as stocks are stronger, the U.S. dollar or Mexican peso is going to weaken. Now, the in most interesting thing about what's happening right at this moment in time is it's not. If the stock market starts to see some weakness, we're going to see 19 and maybe even higher than that. With crude oil weakening, that's just provoking it as well. So I'm long. I bought a little bit on the breakout. I own just a small amount. My my uh, my cost average right now is at uh, eighteen sixty two sixty five. So I own it like basically right here where my curve is at. All right, I own a little bit. I'm up like you know six seven hundred pips. Um, I have no reason to sell it at this point. It's a small position, but I think I'll tell you the thing is freaking relentless. How high can we go in this move? I mean, this is coming out of a wedge. The 786 retracement comes in at 1893. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, this first move down. I'm gonna look for some extensions here. 161% extension comes in at 1877, so that's probably going to be resistance today. Oops. Uh, USD, XN, resistance 1877, 1877, and um, support right now is 1860. I know 1862, uh, whoops, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to write 1860 for now. Because that that should be the 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 reason that that'll be support on the way back down the breakout point, but um, looks bullish. Oops, not bearish. Looks bullish. All right, let's go over to the Nordic currencies. So here's the Norwegian krona. Now with crude oil weakening, it's taking uh, everything I've got in me not to be on the long side of this. Um, you know, it is non-farm payroll coming up, so I don't, I, I don't want to just, I don't want to just start buying a bunch of dollar pairs right now ahead of NFP. You know, it's, it's, you know, it's obviously, it, you know, it's risky to do that. I'm, I'm carrying dollar Canadian in the NFP. I'm carrying a very small U.S. dollar Mexican peso. I don't feel like I need any more exposure at this moment. But if the dollar has a positive response today. If the dollar has a positive response today, I am going to get long some U.S. dollar Norwegian krona. Okay. Resistance is 40 or 840. Support still is at, um, well, support is still probably right here at 828, but I'm, I'm going to write 825. And, um, I think we, you know, just need to see how the dollar responds to that. It's still bullish. We're still in an inverted head and shoulder pattern, just so you all know. Shoulder, shoulder, head, neckline. We're still, you know, working an inverted head and shoulder pattern at this moment. 8.25 and then 8.40. This will be um, key resistance. And I do not have any US dollar Norwegian. I exited it yesterday. Took a little bit of profit, um, but I'm not in it right now. U.S. dollar Swedish krona. Surprisingly, it's pretty weak today. Uh, I say that surprisingly because I was looking at the data that came out overnight. We had industrial production that came in a little bit. Um, uh, uh, well, I guess it came in better than expected. Um, Year over year, month after month over month, it came in a little worse than expected. Uh, you know, we had new orders out of um, Sweden, and uh, basically we're we're coming back down towards support. So support's going to be at here at 8:27. Resistance is at 8:38. I don't think there's a whole lot to do with the uh, U.S. dollar Swedish krona right now. You know, again, I, I think a lot of people don't want to be on the, um, you know, want to be on the long side necessarily ahead of, uh, you know, ahead of uh, NFP. P uh, people are expecting a weak number, just so you all know. I do expect a weak number as well. 
but again, I want to be ready to buy some of the stuff on any dip. So 827, and what do we say, 838? 838, yeah, 838. And what I'm going to do really quick, uh, let me address a couple of your questions that have come in, and um, and this is uh, in a range. Okay, so let me let me take a couple of questions really quick. Your your bias chart is done, and um, let's get to it. We're getting close. All right, uh, Daryl said. Uh,